This is Greg Orloff, and I am here with Bri Dillon, and Bri is the Senior Vice President of Partners and Business Development at Aviva. Welcome, Bri. Hey, Greg. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for being here. So maybe we'll just kick things off from a conversational standpoint. You know, digital twin technology, it's been hailed as a game changer for industrial operations. You know, how can organizations leverage digital twins to optimize their processes? And if you can, Bri, can you, can you share maybe some examples of successful implementations that you've seen? Yeah, sure. I mean, digital twins is a is a concept I think that's, that means many different things to many different people. And it's all I can think around the, the point of view of the, the, the individual. Um, we have digital twins that happen in engineering, kind of an engineering digital twin, which is focused more on the design and build side of the house, um, mm -hmm. where we're looking at things like 1D, 2D, 3D design with um, simulation and how that all kind of interoperates together. Um, then you have um, and, and it's used both for obviously for does not just building, but also retrofitting uh, different facilities. Sure. Uh, then they have operational digital twins, um, which are obviously more focused around the operational user uh, to optimize their process and so forth in real time, which I think is what you're kind of alluding to. Um, and digital twins, again, it depends on the person talking about it. But, you know, in, in some ways, digital twins have been around for a really long time, uh, at least in terms of digitizing an asset and making that information be available off the asset so people can do optimizations of it. And one of the big businesses inside of Aviva is the Pi system business, which has been doing this for 40 years. In fact, we just had a recent conference um, he, uh, in uh, San Francisco and you know, I hosted a panel at the time and one of our customers was saying, look, we have digital twins already, it's, it's in Pi, right? Now, of course, when they talk about the game changing nature of digital twins, people are referring more to how do you take the design build how something was actually designed and simulated to run against actually how it is running in real time. And then how do you then make that all available to drive innovation? Like this is really what I think what people consider to be the game changers uh, in terms of um, uh, where this digital twin technology can take us. And in fact, if you go back and watch our conference, which is actually uh, uh, on our website, you'll hear Shell okay. talk about this. Shell talk about, you know, they put together a digital twin that, that basically was in this, in this kind of idea. Um, and, you know, they thought they'd have, you know, a handful of projects and, and the number of projects that came based upon just having the information available to those who could innovate vastly outseated uh, their um, original expectation. And so I think that people are really excited about this idea of being able to get the data in their hands so they can drive this bigger innovation. Um, and I think digital twin is just, you know, the next generation of, of that digitization. Um, in terms of some examples, just you want some customer examples. So one, one customer example um, is Ocker uh, Carbon Capture. Uh, and they, this is um, kind of the engineering side of the house, looking at 1D, 2D, 3D design um, with simulation. Um, and for them, you know, they were able to go through and, and this was on our, on our website and I'll, I'm going to make sure I get the numbers right. So I don't miss, miss <laughs> here. Um, but they had 90% overall efficiency through collaboration using the cloud, um, and reduced time to market by 50%, uh, just by having wow. you know, this kind of one platform uh, that they could collaborate on across the design side of the house. That's pretty impressive numbers. Um, you know, maybe peel this onion back a little bit more, not even specifically in that example, but you know, we talk about data and you know, transitioning data to information or usable information. Mm -hmm. What are some of those best practices for effectively managing and utilizing and extracting that value out of the data that's being collected? It's, it's one of the biggest challenges our customers face. Uh, they have lots of data and the data is growing, right? I think the estimates say that over the past two years, 50% of the operational data was was created and over the next two years, that'll also be true. So basically every two years, operational data is, is doubling, right? And, and the reality is most of our customers um, struggle with being able to actually get that data set at scale and actually be able to use it. Um, so I think that, you know, in terms of best practices, the first thing is, is being able to have a data management strategy that enables organizations to have a repeatable way to expose that data set off without of course impacting the operations in a negative way. Cause that's one of the, the other things that's unique about our customer base is, right? is, is if something goes wrong, it has very dire consequences. Things can um, blow up and, and really bad things can happen. And so it's, it's, it's about exposing and democratizing that data 
in a world that has higher and higher security ramifications that people are more and more concerned around what could actually happen if that information isn't, um, it, it isn't well, if once if something is jeopardized while getting the information off the asset, let me say that. Um, and so I think, I think, that, I think that's, that's the best practice. I think the other thing is, is that because of all of the potential, companies have jumped both feet in and just invested in a lot of bespoke projects to kind of integrate it on their own um, mm -hmm. with things that really aren't standardized products and they're more projects. Uh, and I think that's I think. actually really starting to impact some customers in a negative way in that keeping that up to date and keeping that, um, you know, um, with the, the rapid change of, of technology. So I think the other best practice, I would say one is data management strategy. Number two is as much as possible using standardized products to um, that working with a, a partner, uh, of course, like Aviva, of course, we'd love customers to work with us, um, that we can help stay up to date, make sure that things can get upgraded, uh, that you have um, you know, a long-term strategy that you can continue to, uh, to move at the pace of technology. You know, you're, you're, you're hinting around a, a big macroscopic topic. I mean, it, it's kind of a, that return on investment, right? You know, and maybe boil down for us, um, what are some of the, the key performance indicators that are used when you're, you as Aviva are coming in there to try and measure and quantify the ROI that, that a client existing or new is going to get on a project or an entire implementation? Well, you know, it's, it's where um, we have an interesting history on this. Uh, and a lot of this came from the business that I was lucky enough to be a part of, which is the pie business. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things we've always believed in is obviously empowering operational experts with, with data and information and then having them innovate off that information and then share that with their peers. And then we basically measure it in this words that our customers use. So we have thousands of presentations over the years um, that showcase you know, the value customers can get from data uh, just in the Pi system presentations alone. I think there's over 3,000 of them we have on our website today over the past you know, 30 years. Um, so, so there's, there's lots of examples uh, that are out there in terms of, of doing it. Interestingly enough, I don't think that the, the areas in which that they gain value changes. I think the way in which they do it does. So when you think about the areas okay. of value customers typically get, it'll be things around like energy use. How do you, you know, uh, optimize the energy consumption of a facility? Um, how do you, and that's kind of, of course, today we would call that sustainability. Um, the, the, the other area, but how do I do process efficiencies? How do I do asset health? How do I look at, you know, regulatory um, uh, impacts? Um, how do I look at the product impacts and the, and the product quality that comes out the back end? So these are things that our customers have been doing for, for a really long time. I don't think that the, that, that, the, um, that the measurement changes. I think how they get there just changes. I have a new set of technology that gives us to do things that we weren't capable of doing before due to the rise of distributed computing and, and, and cloud you know, scalability that allows us to, to innovate in ways we couldn't innovate in the past. But I don't think that the actual measurement by which they they get impact actually changes. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. The, the times change and the tools change with them, right? But the, the needs kind of remain the same. Needs remain the same. <laughs> still, we're still our customers are still producing power. They're still producing, you know, metals. They're still producing chemicals. Uh, the, the, the that part hasn't changed. What's changed is how they go about it. No, interesting. So you know, tell me, how is Aviva positioned, you know, to help organizations? We've talked at a high level about this. You know, how are you positioned to help them you know, capitalize on opportunities, you know, represented by the connected industrial economy and the, the term that's kind of floating around out there? So we're, we believe we're uniquely positioned because we come from what we believe are the three pillars to integrate, to truly be able to do this at scale. One of the pillars was the original Aviva, which was the design engineering business, which has you know, a very strong market uh, share um, on that side of the house, on the 1D, 2D, 3D design and simulation business. Uh, we have the monitoring and control business, which as well has very large um, uh, installations and, 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 and gives us a point of view of understanding how controls work from the HMI SCADA side. And then we have Pi, which is really on the optimization side, taking data sets off of those control systems and doing optimization. So we kind of put these pillars in the design, operate and optimize. Those are the three pillars. Um, and since we have this deep knowledge and history, as well as the customer base across those three pillars, 
you know, we think we're uniquely positioned to help customers to integrate those three pillars together and doing so in a hybrid cloud environment uh, that enables our customers to extract the information across those three different areas of the uh, of function and make that available data set in real time so that customers can go and innovate, not just with themselves, but also with the wider uh, partner ecosystem. That's one of the other things that you know we strongly believe in is that we have to be able to make this data set available. It's the customer's data, they have to manage it and they make, can make it available to their vendors, suppliers, uh, to their partners, um, and some of those partners, of course, compete with parts of our business, and that's fine as well. At the end of the day, our most important thing is to make sure we're driving the most value for our customers. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe you know, as, as a parting shot, if you will, as organizations strive, you know, and maybe not just a large 800-pound gorillas, but some of the smaller organizations out there too, they're striving to stay ahead of this ever-changing connected industrial economy. You know, what are some fundamental strategies they can employ to meet this evolving roundabout of customer needs that just keeps, keeps upon us. Yeah, I think we touched on it a little bit. I think the first thing is, is finding the right partners that they want to partner with. Uh, you know, a lot of our customer base, I think being pressured with the amount of technology changes have really started to build a lot of their own technology. Uh, and I think that, you know, although that makes sense in some cases, in a lot of cases, I think there's ways of economies of scale to be able to partner with a company that's just focused on building technology in a productized way. Um, we'll really have good uh, long-term payback uh, for our customer bet. So I think, I think that's one of the pieces. Um, I think also making sure that whoever you partner with, that your data set is yours in terms of the, the, the customers, right? That, that they always prioritize that that data sets that they're, that they're gaining or that, that's in their systems can be made available and they can make that data set available to the widening change because what's gonna, the data is coming off the systems, you know, a lot of that data is not changing, right? I mean, it, it, it's coming off a lot of these systems. Um, what's changing is the tool set that's gonna go analyze that data set, right? And so I right. think again, back to that thing we talked about earlier, investing in, in the infrastructure for your data set and data, good data management practices, um, you know, things like, Try not to copy the data too many times. Try to keep them in as close to the source as possible. Uh, try to, if you're going to, you know, move data sets out, make sure they stay in, in, in technologies that make sense for that type of data. Um, so I think these are some of the things that will help organizations uh, going forward. I also think simplifying, right? I think, oh, unfortunately, over the past, you know, maybe fortunately or unfortunately, over the past decades, Technology has moved at a fast pace and companies have taken advantage of that and it's created lots of silos inside of an organization. We have an engineering silo, we have an IT silo, we have an OT right. silo. Uh, and I think companies are trying to bring those things together, but it's hard. And the more applications and the more different solutions you have in each one of those silos, the harder it is, you know, to, to be able to um, have, you know, long-term um, uh, payback uh, for these investments, things start to become very, very costly. Sometimes we'll talk about, you know, thinking about things in terms of a layer cake versus stovepipes, right? If there's too sure. many stovepipes, it's really hard to bring things together. So I think these are some of the things uh, that companies can do uh, to ensure that, you know, long term, uh, they'll be able to keep up with the change of technology pace. And it's a challenge. Oh, great. Appreciate the insights. Brian. Thanks a lot. Okay, no problem. Thanks for having me.